Today on Forbes, the highest paid TV showrunners 2024. One veteran entertainment manager, speaking about the deals top TV producers are offered today, says, quote, the yacht money is gone. It was a different story five years ago. That was the peak of the so-called streaming wars, when studios and technology companies, bolstered by low interest rates and Wall Street optimism, were locked in an arms race for subscriber growth, seemingly at any cost. The number of scripted TV shows on broadcast and streaming in that period surpassed 500 for the first time. And for those creators whose content that broke through to mainstream popularity, the dollar amounts had a lot of zeros. At least a dozen showrunners signed nine-figure deals during that window, and another dozen landed more than $50 million across four- or five-year contracts. Now, with the majority of those deals having expired or set to end in the coming months, the same creators are emerging into a very different TV landscape. The effects of the pandemic, two Hollywood strikes, and widespread corporate cost-cutting, not to mention the lack of hits produced on some large showrunner deals, have cratered the market for overall deals, show orders, and licensing deals. For the winners at Sunday's 2024 Emmy Awards, it will be gold-plated trophies and not outsized paydays that are the prize at the end of the red carpet. There are still, however, a few showrunners whose earnings defy gravity. The older generation of creators who own a percentage of the $100 million or more in profits thrown off each year by mega-hits like The Simpsons or The Big Bang Theory. Of TV's highest-paid showrunners for 2024, five creators made more than $100 million in the past 12 months, even after paying fees to agents, managers, and lawyers. South Park's Matt Stone and Trey Parker, BET super producer Tyler Perry, Law & Order's Dick Wolf, The Simpsons' J.L. Brooks and Matt Groening, and The Big Bang Theory's Chuck Lorre, account for more than half of the $1.2 billion collected by the top 20. The disparity would be even greater with the addition of Friends producers Kevin Bright, Marta Kaufman, and David Crane, but eligibility was restricted to showrunners who had a new show on the air in the past year. Because traditional profit participation and syndication has been mostly eradicated in the streaming era, and the number of episodes produced by each show has sharply declined, there is little potential for the astronomical success enjoyed by past generations of producers. In order to justify their ongoing value to studios and streamers, today's showrunners have become something closer to mini studio heads, overseeing a small universe of shows and projects for a platform. Producers as prolific as Yellowstone's Taylor Sheridan or American Horror Story's Ryan Murphy can still command big totals. These so-called godfather producers are handsomely paid on any project they are associated with, regardless of their level of involvement. It's a big reason why the top 20 showrunners only include three producers under the age of 50 years old. Parks and Recreation's Michael Schur, who's 48, Westworld's Lisa Joy, who's 47, and Jonathan Nolan, who's 48, compared to five over the age of 70. For the younger generation of showrunners who are coming of age in this new TV environment and are often still on their first hit show, overall deals almost never exceed $10 million with per-episode fees charged off against that total. This new crop, who are generally more diverse in terms of race, gender, and sexual orientation, have little chance of reaching the upper echelon of earnings in the near future. At the top of this year's highest-paid showrunners list are Matt Stone and Trey Parker at $162 million, $180 million gross. The duo behind Colorado's potty-mouthed elementary schoolers are still the industry pace-setters thanks to the all-encompassing six-year, $935 million deal they inked with Viacom CBS in 2021 for ongoing rights to South Park. Parker and Stone said in a recent Vanity Fair interview that they are pausing production on the show until after the 2024 presidential election. Parker said, quote, I don't know what more we could possibly say about Trump. Meanwhile, their long-running musical, The Book of Mormon, is still going strong on Broadway, in London's West End, and in Australia beginning in 2025. For full coverage and to see our whole list of the 20 highest paid showrunners for 2024, check out Matt Craig and Lisette Voitko Best's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.